free agent. So what is the free agent, guys? So to start, I think we should talk about this idea of job security or career security. And I think that we need to throw some cold water on that idea. I'm not so sure that the job security is something that exists these days, either in big companies or small companies, or even in the, the, the individual minds for that matter. Uh, the days, the days, sorry, of the lifetime employment that you are going to get a job with one company and then you stay with that company for, for your whole career is not just going to happen anymore, guys. You really have to think like a free agent. I think of a professional sports. So you can imagine that the best professional athletes, they often become free agents. It means that they can go from one team to another. Lots of, lots of teams actually want them and lots of teams are willing to pay them more and more money to attract them to their team. And I think that the people need to think that way as an employee. So you wanted to be a free agent now and you wanted to imagine that you are building your own career. You might go from one company to another, then another, then another. And ideally, the best situation is that the companies actually want you and you are willing to, sorry, they are willing um, to pay you more and more money and eventually to get you to come. That's exactly um, true. I mean, not only if you are moving from company to company, but even if you are in a large corporation and you want to just, just uh, move up through the company ranks as a free agent, it basically means that you are going to renegotiate your contract. But how are you going to do that? So, well, you know, I think that the first things that you have to do is that you have to add to your skills, add your resume. Give people a reason to want to promote you. Move you into a different department or, as I've said, you know, move to a different company. It doesn't matter. Like, it's, it's, it's all the same concept to get yourself in a position where people want to hire you to do whatever it is that you do. And I think that the, whatever your job is, I mean, you may be a business person who is very business minded. So right, you, you think about the businesses all the time. You have that mindset. But you know, you, you might also just be a teacher like me. Or you might be someone who is, who is not a business person. So you don't think of yourself as a business person. But you know, all jobs are insecure now, especially today. We are going through the tough times, COVID-19, right? If you see that, you know, there are budget crunches everywhere. You've got the companies downsizing everywhere. Government jobs, they're cutting people to everywhere in the world. And in any career, any job, there is always the possibility that you might get cut, that your job might get cut or that your company, your department, or your government agency is going to get cut. So you have to be ready. You really need to think in a business way about your career. Imagine that uh, you yourself are the product, for example. You are the brand. There is that word used in the marketing, branding, probably you heard about that. We use, we can use it actually as a verb to brand. It really means that kind of a market yourself, to make yourself special, unique, different, so that when people think of you and they think of your name, that they have a strong imagine in their minds of who you are, what you are good at, and how you are different than everyone else. And I think that the way that you build that image 
is by increasing your skills, increasing your visibility within an organization. I mean, whether it's a company itself or maybe it's a trade organization, clubs, whatever you want to call it. But you improve the view people have of you. In the business world, an improvement in a view would tend to be somebody who seems to or does in fact know a great deal about the whole business operation or the business flow. They are not just secluded in a single piece of business operation. They understand the total picture. They are able to not only understand, but make some kind of a contribution in a way of ideas and implementing programs and things that maybe, I don't know, like save companies money or save departments money or um, improve efficiency and effectiveness of a particular department or a particular company. I mean, it doesn't make any difference what it is. It's not just in a company. It's like uh, you say it could be, you know, like it could be a teacher like me, right? So the good teachers tend to be the ones who put out good students. That doesn't, it doesn't mean that they all, they all have a good grades, you know, like, but the students come out and they really and truly know something. Um, I think there's an the idea from the Seth Godin. He's a marketing expert and writer. I really like him. So he writes about the marketing and he's got a, a great book title. The title of the book is, uh, is a Purple Cow. The point of the book, the, the main message is that you need to be different. You need to be special, unique, so you are not the same as everyone else. Listen, my friends, so if you, are the, if you are the same as everyone else, and let's say your company or your job or wherever you're working, if they need to cut people, then if you are the same as everyone else, then they might just cut you because there is no reason to keep you. That's why you need to be a purple cow. You can imagine this idea, like, so most cows are brown or black or white. So if you see a brown cow, right, it's not special. You don't probably focus on it, right? You don't think about it. But if you saw a purple cow, right, you are, let's say you are driving on the road and you look, right, and you see a purple cow, probably you are going to look at it because it's different, it's special. So guys, the point is that you need to be this way in your own career if you are going to, to make more money in your current job or maybe your first job. Or let's say if you are going to have more security. So if they start to cut people, they won't cut you because you are special. Of course, special here does not mean, you know, like you're looking stranger or weird. It means that you are special in a way that benefits the company or your employer simply. But question may arise, so how do you become special? Well, in my opinion, you become special, as I said before, by improving your skills and your knowledge. Because knowledge is power. Knowledge is money. And the way you acquire knowledge is, is, is just not by sitting down and reading a book. But whatever organization you are in, learn as much about that organization as you can. Let's say if you are in the finance department or the marketing department or the sales department, find out about the rest of the company. If you are a teacher like me, so let's say I wanted to move up through the supervisor ranks of the education system. I have to find out what those people do. I have to gain some knowledge. I have to uh, spend some time with the people that are in the jobs that I would like to have. 
I have to learn what they do, learn their system, learn about how, learn about how they make decisions, learn about the decisions uh, that they have to make, which are probably different than the ones that I am making on a regular basis. And one more thing, I think that I would, I would add to that, I think as well, is that just um, to um, improve your individual skills in, in, in whatever job you are in. You have to make your job special. And I think that that's a probably one of the main, um, one of the, the main points here. Let's say that you are a teacher. Uh, let me just, I will give you an example from my own career. You know, like uh, I was an English teacher, um, like, come a couple of years from now, you know, um, and I thought that, you know, everybody, like all the other English teachers, they did the same thing in the private English courses. They focus on teaching the textbooks, you know, teaching the standard activities, you know, pushing students, memorizing grammar and vocabularies, you know, you know, just being normal. But I focus on the learning how to motivate my students. I try to to learn new skills like uh, leadership skills, motivational skills, public speaking skills, and even entertainment skills like a uh, drama and comedy. And I try to, to bring all these new skills into my teaching to make myself more useful, more powerful, more special, more different. And you know what? It worked. I was able to get jobs very easily. Any time I needed to get a new job, for example, if I wanted to, uh, I don't know, travel a new country and work there, it was e very easy for me, you know, to do that because I made myself special. I, I made myself different. I made myself an international instructor. So, I think that the, the same is, 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 is true in the business world. The first thing you have to do is to, is be the best at whatever it is that you do be the best you can be be unique in that job be outstanding seek the awards and the praise from doing what you do but also improve on the skills that you are going to need uh, and particularly the skills that you know for a fact that you don't have but you may ask me, what is the business skills, right? For example, presentation skills. I'm sure that you are going to give me, you are going to be giving presentations the rest of your life. I don't care what you do. Yeah, they may not be a big ones in front of the thousands of people, but improve your presentation skills, all of your communication skills. Even your ability, you know, like the way that you write email notes and the way that you, you talk on the uh, telephone, all of these skills become more and more important the longer that you are in the business world. The last but not least, I think that if you're working for any company, you have to bring something to the table. And you wanted to bring more and more and more to the table for your employers. Maybe for future employers in general. So you really want to bring more skills, more knowledge, more relationship, more uniqueness, all of these things. It's all about building yourself as if you know, you know imaging, you know, you, you yourself are the product, we said it, right? You are your own company and you are selling it to your employer. And you are actually, right? Right? And in turn, they are giving you a paycheck for services or for doing something. And so if you think more like a business person and you try to do a better and better job and really go above and beyond what is the basic requirements are, and you do more than is expected, yeah, maybe in the beginning you will feel like, well, you know, I'm doing a, a lot of a lot more work for this for the same money. So why am am I doing it? You know, it's like crazy. But in the long term, it really will pay off. It will benefit your career, and you will get better jobs, and you will get more money, and you will have more security. I can say. So that's why, guys, 
you really have to think long term with your career. Not just on, on, on the, the job that you have uh, right now or your first job. You may hate even your first job. Or you may hate the job you have now. I, I hated a, a lot of my jobs before. But by thinking this way, constantly trying to improve and grow and learn, even in a job that you hate, long term you really can have a great career. And I think that that's the main point. And one more thing. So uh, you want to do a reality check on your skills, guys. And what you want in life. And where you are going and what it's going to take to get there. And then you have to, to generate a, a real buzz about you. You are the unique one and the people are buzzing about you. And everybody wants you in their operation, in their organization or in their company. All right, uh, this is it for today. I uh, hope that I will see you next time. Bye-bye.